Hey people, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Last we left off, Monica was saying, why don't we share what we made with the class, everybody? AKA the club. So I don't remember the exact poem we made, but if it is based off the words we use, it's gonna be a very strange one, that's for sure. Let's find out what it is. Yay! Sayori's excited. Sabi, I can't wait to read yours. You're gonna love it, I think. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> I can't wait to read mine either. <laughs> can't quite remember what I wrote. Same. I feel to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Who should I show my poem to first? Sayori's gonna like it. Monica, I don't really know who she is quite yet. Yuri seems super shy, so maybe she'd be a little uncomfortable being approached right away. And Natsuki, top tier. Top tier, let's go talk to Natsuki. So far, my personal favorite. Hmm, let's we'll see if she likes it. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one, but I can't really say it's any better either, you know? Garbage is garbage, it all stinks, even if it's not the same. Oh, uh, phew. Huh? Phew what? Oh, well, anything that is in the train wreck, I'll take that as an absolute win. And I get the feeling that you're probably the most critical. <laughs> That's not why I came to you, but okay, interesting. H hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? <laughs> glad to see someone recognizes my experience. I'm glad you took this in the right way. Didn't second guess it in the wrong way. Well then, keep practicing, and maybe, maybe you'll be as good as me someday. Call me Natsuki-sama. Bow down, peasant. That's, um... Uh, okay, well... Something tells me not to completely miss the point, but let's move on. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I had a feeling. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with us for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Whoa, she's already shipping us. That's interesting. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? That's such a good description of a person. Like, how do you describe that person? What feeling do they give you? Uh, they're just fluffy. Warm, fuzzy. Uh, like a dandelion on a summer afternoon with a soft breeze on your skin. Like that, you know? That's such an interesting description, Natsuki. It's like she's dragging around a dead way. Whoa, we're still alive, and I feel like, if anything, we're dragging her around. Because if you paid any attention, we were taking care of her earlier, Natsuki. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. That's another way to think of it, too. Yeah, she's so airheaded. That's all it is. She's like, all right, going on a little adventure. Up, up, and away, up, up, and away, up, up, and away. It's like, oh, crap, you gotta get back down to Earth, please. And thank you. You don't need to go to the uh, mothership just yet. You need to stay here, Sayori. You still got a mission. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Whatever, here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I was gonna try to do a little singing, but I don't remember. Fat lasso, fat, something like that. Full stop. I, I don't know those things. So strange to think that I took a singing class, but we were never taught that. Oh well. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words, Doki Doki. She likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me off. It took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders. Her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. One of her friends start to like spiders too. That's why I'm not friends with her. 
It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. What if she's a spider? Maybe it's time. I stomp her. That's, that feels like this is where it's going. Like... Natsuki, you're adorable, you're super cute, you bake and all that, and you you got that little sundary vibe going on, but now I... If these are your real thoughts about somebody, Amy, Amy was it? Sounds like a lovely person. Let me, let me double check history. Amy, right? Oh, oh, okay. Can, because that was not exactly text. Wow. Well, so you sound like a lovely person, Natsuki. You sound vile for hating on them for hating spiders. Like, I I don't enjoy snakes, for example, but I can vibe with someone if they're a good person and they happen to like snakes. Just uh, keep me away from snakes and we're all good. And I'm sure Amy would respect your boundary for spiders. Wow. Hopefully, hopefully there's some character growth and change, Natsuki. Dang. Not bad, right? It's uh, quite a bit longer than yesterday's. But this is also an interesting way to get some more depth into the character, where things we can't see, scenes we haven't been able to view for these characters, is through their poems, reflect who they are, and give you hints on how to, you know, maybe appease them or, or go after them if you want to do that for your next poem. So I think that's neat, that we actually get to see what they have. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. Watch out. Next thing I'm going to have is a sequel to the Song of Ice and Fire series. I'm going to have it ready before George R.R. R. Martin. It's going to be incredible. I'm just warming up still. I'm going to write even more, even more, even more. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. You better watch out. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they've been. Like anybody would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? <clears throat> Do you know people like that? Of course, it's how everyone thinks of my... About how everyone thinks of my... That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. Where, by subject, is she referring to Amy? Or is she referring to the character not actually being herself in the poem? And somebody else that's just an asshole who doesn't like spider lovers. <laughs> Somebody who's got a fear of Spider-Man, huh? Well, if, if, if it's a fictional character and this wasn't her real beliefs, then I will be glad to continue talking to Natsuki. That doesn't matter, it could be about anything. Hopefully I didn't say that line already. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something you're afraid that if people find out, they make fun of you or think less of you. That's pretty true. That just makes people stupid. Okay, now I'm gaining respect there. Natsuki. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and makes them happy? Do you like spiders, Natsuki? Mm. But also, interesting. Although I feel like that message is kind of obfuscated in the poem itself. It, the poem does show that the uh, point of view character writing it is dumb just by an awareness of the situation, but it's not, you know, as clear as you might want wanted, Natsuki. You might come across as propagating and uh, promoting the view that hating people for a weird hobby is okay. I think people really need to learn to respect others who are liking weird things. I really want to know what you like, what are your weird things, let's find out. Well, you're definitely right, at least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message or takeaway from it. That's valid. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Oh, that's a notification from my phone. No big deal. I forgot to put that on silent. My bad. Remember that. Yeah, I should remember whatever my phone just told me. That's for sure, Natsuki. Sorry about that. Let's get back to what you were saying. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. I wonder, do we have like a week with them? Or two weeks or a month? I don't know how long in universe the story of this game takes. I really just don't know what the runtime is. Who should I show my poem to next? 
uh, Sayuri, because she'll like her. Monica, because she's a leader. Then Yuri. That way, you know, we can get her interesting opinion at the end. I think she's the one who has, like, a fascination with edginess. Or was that Monica? It was one of them. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Sabi! Eh? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem. Ugh. You're too honest sometimes, so you worry. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall. I want to frame it. Can I, can I, can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Like, are we speaking Japanese right now? Is that what we're doing? I see katakana, I see kanji, I see hiragana on the walls around us, but I feel like the only language we know is English. <laughs> well... Maybe that's why, but I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> ah, just a slapdash. Uh, haberdasher? What does that word mean? It's not slapdash. So. Jeez, I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. We just talked to Natsuki. Did they really expect us just to talk to her first and then somebody else? Interesting. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. Of course, anything you do or make for me or anybody else, I'm gonna love. Because it was your hard work, but I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's, it's a Sabi poem. Okay, well, Natsuki, I'm sorry. Childhood friend usually loses, but maybe this time, Sayori, maybe this time. Let's go on your route, because I think that's where we're headed anyways. And that makes it feel extra special. If somebody told me those kinds of words, oh boy. Heart melted. Feeling up. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs a sheet against her chest. That's adorable. That's ridiculously adorable. You're so weird, Sayori. But that's out of love for you. Platonic, romantic, whatever. There is love there, my boy. You gotta pay more attention. <laughs> um, well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just cope with my heart, my gut feeling, my reaction. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly... <clears throat> I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. I accidentally said that in her voice. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah... Me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Huh, you wanna write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. You're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. For normally, that's sound advice. But this is a narrative. This is a written project. You are a fictional character, Sayori. Are you gonna get hurt? Is there gonna be some life-threatening injury on your route? Maybe we shouldn't go on your route if we're gonna hurt you. Cause that sounds like foreshadowing to me. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Oh, hey, sometimes I like sad poems too. Hmm. Conundrum. Puzzling this one out is going to be difficult. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? Bittersweet? Ambivalent? What is it? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! There it is! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. I just... Happy and sad? Yeah, I like sweet and salty. I can't see you liking something sad, so you really? Well, I full of sadness and sometimes it's important you feel it. Well, I like happy the most. But what's the good of happiness without having a little rain cloud in your head? A sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. Yeah, it's kind of like listening to sad music when you're feeling down. You'd think it would be self-perpetuating, but it kind of reminds you that you're not alone. That's such a good image, too. And make a nice, happy rainbow! Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. I guess you are a literature club member. Yeah, it is. I should write that down. I should jot it down. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Sabi. I should go write that down. Well, yeah, then. 
You can read my poem now, okay? Oh, that's very nice handwriting. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. Oh. Oh, it's imagery. That seems to be our big thing. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little bubbles of sunshine all loving together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tickly. There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. What are you talking about? Hair? What? What are you putting in the bottles? Wait, 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 what? what? Uh, let's keep reading. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but I'm not going to overanalyze it too much. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes a friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends, and they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be my for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling, they're all shouting, pleading something. All I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Okay, um, <clears throat> Sayori. Shall we talk to the therapist? Are you okay? Uh, trying not to overanalyze? On the surface, it sounds actually to me nothing literal, more just metaphorically. She's trying to keep the happiness, joy, and pleasantry and the good thoughts around so that she can lift up other people. She forgets herself and loses it, and she needs the help. And now she feels like guilty and failure for failing her friends. And okay, that's, that's a whole mess. That's a whole mess. Sayori, darling. Oh, no. That's not good at all. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, exactly. Sayori, did you really write this? And I feel like it's definitely better than Natsuki's poem, too. Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I haven't been really in touch with my feelings lately. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. <laughs> Creepy? Oh, well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. Let's put that uh, peek into your psyche away. I'm thinking too hard about it. Exactly. Can't overanalyze it. Point is, it came out good and you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... Yeah, I mean, showing that kind of deep emotion and openness and vulnerability to somebody else is hard. It's very hard. I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. I'm a poet at heart. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. The pen is my wand. The ink is the spell I cast upon the paper. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Okay. Flag one. You're gonna keep get hurt. You're gonna get hurt if this keeps up flag too. Until I die. Hmm. What are you gonna write the killer's name in blood or something? What's gonna happen, Sayori? <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Oops, wrong button. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. You know, maybe sometimes people just gotta try things out, and maybe this time it'll stick, who knows? Let's see. Who should I show my poem to next? Let's do Monica and then Yuri. Hi again, Zubby. Oh, uh, fantastic. Great. Well, well designed, well designed. Mm hmm. Don't mind me. We just have a teeny tiny little glitch again. There's no rollback option. That's usually the thing we have to. All right, let's let's save immediately, and I will cut in case we have some other issues. Okay, it's working now. I think we should be good. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, I haven't really gotten that far, you know. 
probably just do some modern art, uh, abstract poem like roses are red, violets are blue, and then I write lines on the paper. You know, that have no real end to it. No, 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 he'll, he'll write something so cheesy, he'll be like, Roses are red, violets are blue. And when I think of happy thoughts, I think of you. He'll write something like that. There we go. Well, uh, being in this club is one thing, but performing and growing up a bunch of people? So I am poetry night? No, thank you. I'd rather slam the door shut and walk away. I'll uh, have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> again, alright, um, let's try to ignore that again. I like it, Zubby. Okay. I'm glad you liked it, whatever it was. Really? Oh, right, our poem. It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, 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 no. It kind of makes me think of something not cuter. Really? When we showed it to her, she didn't seem to care much at all. But she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. It's gonna be painful on your back if you did that like a lot. In reality, oof. <laughs> if you say so. Yeah. Also, again, I don't know what's going on with the game. I really hope it doesn't crash. Let's see if we can get through this together. It's a cursed game. By any chance, have you read anything by Shel Silverstein? Or was this Stein? I don't remember how to pronounce it. Stein or Stein. Uh, in reality, me, the player, I have not. <laughs> Yeah? Maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. Okay, maybe I have read some, but I don't remember it. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. She's really passionate about this. Dang, I guess that's her favorite poet. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Oh, she's just comparing. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. I guess not. It might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. That's true. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. Save me. Uh... Hmm. That's an interesting title. Maybe like a good memory you want to say? The colors, they want stuff. Bright, beautiful... I, I could do it in her voice, but I'm just going to do it like this. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it wants stop. Violent, grating, waveform, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless... Okay, is that all? Load me. Wait a second. Is this a meta thing right now? Save me and load me? Hold on. Alright, I don't have an option to save yet. I'm gonna do it just now. Hmm, okay, I'm gonna save and load it just to see what happens. I feel like they're asking us to do this. I'll save this into an empty slot. You can see all the variety of recording times, how inconsistent I am here, but whatever. And I will uh, load it now. Alright, what's gonna happen? Nothing. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. Okay, this is definitely hinting something. I don't know what's going on. And it seemed very meta. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper, that's for sure, with like how you're ended so late. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic, yeah? That's what somebody else said. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. Poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with a reader. With us, you mean? Mm. The player. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. 
So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Okay, yeah, I feel like it's a pretty common tip in these types of games, but... What are you... Hmm. You never know when you might change your mind. Okay. So, this is a little bit meta. I didn't expect that. It's when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Haha. <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Alright. We have one last person to show our poem to and read theirs. Yuri, let's see. Let's see what you've written for today. Huh. Hmm. This is pretty good, Zabi. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently everyone writes. So I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid uh, to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the thing you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. Wow, you really are giving me the best advice out of everyone here. The real critique. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have a... Um, well, an example of that. If you like to read it, you know? If you'd like to read my poem... Of course, right. Is this a poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me a poem. Oh, you even fancy your handwriting. Poems a little difficult to read. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilting snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. What are they? I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. Okay, weird. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The noon, or moon, okay. Moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the overly satisfied Adam. Raccoon has taken following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood! Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Why are you so focused on your knife? Why is there a rush of blood? And what do you mean feed yourself again? Did you eat the raccoon? Let's not question that. I'm scared. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday. I can uh, see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit close to my preferred writing style. Okay, metaphorical, huh? Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I'm taking these all so very literally. Uh, that's probably a bad thing. <laughs> I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Oh, you might get along with Natsuki in her poem. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Oh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? Yeah, yeah. About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest. Eh? She, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. Are you hurting somebody? <laughs> Yuri? Are you hurting this raccoon? 
Oh boy. Are you like my dog? My dog's a little murderer. More like a cat sometimes. She, she's right. Ah, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Oh, please don't tell her I said that. Haha, <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. And now I feel no guilt, no remorse. So I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, everyone, she tells us. But we'll find out what her announcement is on the next part of Doki Doki Literature Club. Until now, have a good day, everyone. Until now, until then. <laughs>